Okay, let's talk about changing numbers into binary numbers. Now, if you look, we, you see we have denarii and decimal. Now, if you're across the pond and you live in the UK, you'll recognize the word denarii. If you live in the States, you'll recognize the word decimal. They're the same number system. They're just called two different things. But we're going to change those numbers into binary numbers. Now, it doesn't matter what you call it. The system works the exact same way. The first thing you need to understand is that binary, bi means base of two. So if you look on the right hand side, you'll see two to the power of zero is one, two to the power of one is two, exponential all the way to two to the power of eight. Now it does not stop at two to the power of eight. You can go on and on. For this example, I only go two to the power of eight, but you can go as far as you would like. But we always start with two to the power of zero and we go up to the amount of bits that we have. And we'll talk about what that means at the end. So let's get started. So the first number we have is 84. This is a random number I chose. You can use any number you want. But 84 is, you know, just some random number that I chose. So if you look, you'll see I have a number column, a divided by two column, a whole number column, and a remainder column where a one or a zero will go. A lot of people show people how to change numbers into binary, but they don't really explain it and people get lost and they don't really remember how to do it. I hope to clear up that confusion by explaining what's going on here. So let's start. So we have our number 84. We're going to divide by two and we use the same system every single time. So 84 divided by two. I take my number, 42. That's a whole number, there is no decimal, so I'm gonna have a remainder of zero, which is my least significant digit. We'll talk about what that means in just a few moments. So I take my new whole number, 42. Follow the same system. I divide by two, I get 21. There is no decimal, so there is no remainder. I take my new whole number, 21. I divide by two. This time, I'm gonna get a decimal. My decimal comes out to 10.5. Now follow me here, because this is very easy to understand. My whole number is 10. The 0.5 is gonna give me a remainder of one. Now you might be saying, how can I have a remainder of one if my decimal is 0.5? Well, we just took 21 and we divided by two. If we work backwards, we're gonna do 10 times two. So we do 10 times two, we do that mental math, we know that 10 times two is 20. We have a remainder of one. If I take 20 and I add one, 20 plus one equals 21. So that's where the remainder of one comes in. I take my new number 10, follow the same system. I divide by two, I get five. There's no decimal here, so I have no remainder. I go on, I have five, five divided by two gives me a decimal, 2.5. My whole number is two, the 0.5 is gonna give me a remainder of one. Now remember, if you're wondering where that comes from, if we work backwards, we had five and we divided by two. If we work backwards, we take two times two, which is four. You add that remaining one, four plus one is five. That's where the remainder is coming in. So I take my number two, I divide by two, gives me one. One is a whole number, there's no decimal here, so I have no remainder. Because I've reached one, I'm now on my last step. I take one, I divide by two, I get 0 0.5. Five. My whole number is zero. 0. 0.5 gives me a remainder of one, which is my most significant digit. My most significant digit will always be the last one I reach. My least significant digit will be the very first number that I reach. And when we read this, we read this from the bottom to the top. So if I'm gonna write out this binary number, I'm gonna write it from the bottom to the top, left to right. So here's how I would write that. My binary number, if I read from the bottom to the top in the remainder column would be one zero one zero one zero zero that is the binary number for 84. let's take a look at another example 67 this time an odd number it doesn't matter if it's odd even it doesn't matter if it's double digits triple digits it makes no difference i just use these numbers because they're random and i picked them from my head but the system works the exact same way so we take 67 we divide by 2 we get 33.5 my whole number is 33 but i have a decimal so that gives me a remainder of one now that I've done the first one, that's my least significant digit. So let's move on. I take my number, 33. I divide by two. Because I'm gonna get a decimal here, I'm gonna have a remainder of one. My whole number is 16, gives me a remainder of one. I take my new number, 16. Divide by two, I get eight. No decimal, no remainder. Move on, eight. Eight divided by two is four. No decimal, no remainder. I take my new number that I just got, four. Follow the same system. Four divided by two is two. No decimal, no remainder. I take my new number two. I divide that by two. I get one. 
no decimal, no remainder. I've reached one, I'm now on my last step. I take one, one divided by two, which is 0 0.5, my whole number is zero. The 0.5 gives me a remainder of one, and it gives me my most significant digit, and we read it from the most significant to least significant, so from the bottom to the top. And when I read that and write it out from left to right, my binary number for 67 is one, zero, 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 one, one. Let's take a look at one more example. Now, the reason I use two digit numbers here is so the table is, uh, you know, pretty short, it's nice, it's neat, it's concise. A lot of people, when they're learning how to change, you know, decimal or denary numbers to binary numbers, there's so many numbers, they get overwhelmed by what's going on. But if you follow this system, it doesn't matter what number you use, it will always work out the same way. So we take our number 38. We divide by two, we get 19. Now, we know there's no decimal there, so we know there's no remainder. We move on, 19. Divide that by two, I get 9.5. No big deal, my whole number is a nine, the 0.5 gives me a remainder of one. I'm gonna reiterate one more time. If you work backwards, we just took 19 and divided that by two. If we work backwards and we do nine times two, we get 18. We add that remainder one and we get 19. So that's where the remainder comes in. So let's keep moving along. We take our new number nine, we divide that by two, we get 4.5. My whole number is four, I get a remainder of one. I take four, divide that by two, I get two. No decimal, no remainder. I keep going, two divided by two is one. One, no decimal, no remainder. And now I'm on my last step because I have reached one. I take one, I divide that by two, I get 0 0.5. My whole number there is zero. My remainder is gonna be one because of the 0.5. I read this from the bottom to the top, from my most significant to my least significant, and my binary number here is gonna be 100110. That's how it works. Now let's talk about how many numbers you can actually do with binary. So how many numbers can I represent? Well, it all depends on the amount of bits. When I look back here, each of these binary numbers, the 100110, each one of those represents a bit. So if I look at 100110, I see I have six bits there, B-I-T-S. So all you have to do, because it's base two, you take two to the power of bits you have, and that gets how many you can have. For example, if I have three bits, I take two to the power of three, that's eight numbers. I can represent eight numbers with three bits. That's a maximum amount of numbers I can represent. So what would be the highest number that could be represented by three bits? It's not gonna be eight, it's actually gonna be seven. Seven is the highest number represented, because don't forget, zero is a number you can get by the binary system. We can represent zero with the binary number of zero. All right, same thing, if I have four bits, I take two to the power of four, which is 16. I can represent 16 numbers. And I ask you again, what would be the highest number that could be represented? And it would be 15, because zero is a number. Do not forget that. So that's it for binary, how to change things into binary numbers. If you have a question, you can always email me or leave a comment below. I hope this was helpful, and uh, we'll see you guys later.